Hello, this is workshop four. I'm Gavin, and this is going to be PCB design with KiCad. So before we get into the PCB design, I'm going to go over some terminology. So a printed circuit board or a PCB is multiple layers of copper sheets with insulator between them. A surface mount device or an SMD is a device that does not go to the board and is soldered on one side. And you can see to the right, um, I've highlighted some examples of SMD components on a PCB. THT, or a through-hole technology, is a device that has legs that goes through the board and is soldered on those legs. So to the right are examples of some THT components you can find on a PCB. Okay, more terminology. So a component is just a physical device that will be placed in a circuit, for example, just a resistor. A symbol is a graphic and a schematic that represents a component. And then a footprint is just a map of the physical connections for a given component on the PCB. Traces are the PCB analog of a wire and then a uniform piece of copper that connects the components. Vias are a hole with copper inside of it and they allow for different layers to be connected. Nets are the analog to a node and are a connection between one or more components and they're usually named or labeled. And then lastly, fills are the solid copper areas that are usually connected to ground. So why might you want to prototype a PCB? Well, they allow for much more complex designs versus spreadboarding or on a perf board. They allow you to have much more reliable and stable connections between parts. And then they're also more compact and also easier to debug. Um, the cons of prototyping a PCB include when you're creating a PCB, the design is set in stone. It can take more time to design and build in breadboarding. It also can be more expensive, require more knowledge, and also require a third party for manufacturing. Okay, so now we're gonna get started. So the design process for us will include six steps. So we're gonna identify the components and then the circuit di diagrams that you'll use. Then we're going to um, go into the schematic capture with the schematic editor in KiCad. And then we'll do component placing and routing, which is just PCB layout. Next, we'll do verification. And then after that, we'll generate the manufacturing files and then fabricate the PCB. So our goal for this workshop, we will be demonstrating the entire PCB design process in KiCad. And then in the end, you're going to create a 5 for 5 blinker circuit. And a completed uh, assembled design will look something like this. So now we're going to open up KiCad uh, 7.0 and then either press Control N or Command N if you're using a Mac. Then go to the context menu and then select File, Create New Project. And then you're going to name your project um, what's listed below here. And then to the right, after you're done with that, you'll see something that looks like this. So now I'm going to go into KiCad and demonstrate for you guys. Okay, so once you open up KiCad, this is what it should look like. So I'm going to head over to File, then New Project. And then you can put it in that directory you want it to be. So I'm just going to put it in this folder here. And I'm going to name the file ops underscore project A. And I'm going to put my last name, first name. OK, there we go. And then this is what it should look like. OK, so now I'm going to go over the schematic capture process. So we're gonna have five steps today. We're gonna to first create and place all the symbols and then assign footprints to the symbols, then wire the symbols as desired. And then we're gonna flag all pins that shouldn't be connected in the end and then label pins and nets as needed. So this is the schematic editor. You can see a bunch of toolbars and then shortcuts that you can use. Um, we're gonna be using some of these shortcuts today, but if you wanna reference these slides later, you can. These are also some important shortcuts you might find in KiCad that might make your design process a bit faster. Um, again, you can just reference these slides later. So when creating a schematic, our objective today is to create a blinking um, LED circuit with an attached battery using co components that you can find from prior projects. And then this is in the end what your completed schematic would look like in KiCad. So first, we're going to add power symbols. So you're going to open up the power symbol selector by pressing P, or you can navigate to the right toolbar and click the Earth symbol. And then you're going to search for Earth, which is a US ground symbol, and then also VCC. You're going to add both of those nets to your schematic, and then you can place them anywhere in the schematic for now. 
So we're back in KiCad. So we're going to open up that schematic editor. You can do so by pressing here. And then this is what it should look like. So we're going to start by adding power symbols. You can do so by pressing P on your keyboard. So this opens up the selector and then you can choose and find nets by using the search bar here. So I'm going to search up um, Earth. And then you can see that it filters out which items you need. So we need Earth here. So I'm going to click here and then click OK. And then, like I said, for now, you can um, leave it anywhere on your editor that you want. And then also you can zoom in or zoom out by using that scroll on your mouse. So I'm going to scroll in real quick and then just add it here. You can also zoom in or zoom out, for example, using these buttons right here. I like to use my mouse. So once you've added that, you can press one more time using left click, and then we're going to add VCC. You can double click as well to just um, confirm that you want this net. And then I'm just going to add it right here for now. And then that should be good for power symbols. OK, so now we're going to move on to adding symbols. So you can either press A or navigate to the right toolbar and then click that triangle, which is the op amp symbol. And then you're going to search in a box just like we did for the power symbols for the symbols you need. For example, C for capacitor. And then these are the symbols that we're going to add. We're going to add an LED and R underscore US, which is the US resistor symbol, a 555 timer, capacitor, and then also a one by two socket connector. Once you're done with that, you can press OK, and then you can place the symbol anywhere like we did for the power symbols. OK, so I'm going to move on to adding symbols. So you can do so by pressing A, or I'm actually going to head over to this right toolbar and then press on this triangle symbol you see here. And then this will open up the symbol selector. So I'm going to search for the symbols I need. So first, I need an LED. I'm going to add that and then press OK. Just like our symbols, um, our power symbols, you can add it anywhere to the schematic. Um, you can also rotate your symbols. So by pressing R, so I'm going to do that for this LED here. All right, I'm going to leave that there. We also need a resistor. So left click one more time, open it up. Search for R underscore US. Make sure you're searching for that US one. I'm going to click that one there. I'm just going to leave it anywhere on this schematic. Also, you need a capacitor. Let's just see. That's OK. Add here. We also need a 5 by 5 timer, which is NE555P. Leave that there. And then lastly, we're going to need that connector. So. 01x02. Which should, should be this socket one here, which is connector underscore 01x02 underscore socket. Just gonna leave that there. And then that should be good for now. Okay, so to edit component values, we're gonna to wanna to set the value of the component, which can either be the name of the component, value, or a part number. You're gonna hover over a symbol and then right mouse click on the symbol, then click properties in the pop-up or press E to edit its properties. And then we're gonna to wanna to set the value to the desired quantity, which can be 1K, 100 nanofarads, et cetera. And our value scheme will be as follows. So we're gonna have a base value, which is followed by a scale and then a unit. So the scale will be to the power of 10. For example, it could be P for pico, which is 10 to the negative 12, and then also n for nano, which is 10 to the negative 9. And then you'll have your units. So it will be either capacitors, which is F, inductors, which is H, and then for KiCad, we're going to have none for resistors. This is what the window should look like when you're editing component values. Right now, we're only concerned with that value bar that you see there with the C inside. So we're going to be changing the values in there, and I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. Before we actually start editing values, make sure that you're on that cursor. So you can do so by clicking here. So now we're able to freely select items. So 
first before that as well, we're also going to be copying and pasting resistors because in this project, we have three resistors. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So all you have to do is just highlight by left clicking a component, and then you're going to just press control C or command C if you're using a Mac. After that, you can just press control V anywhere, and then you'll have another resistor. So this is just to save a lot of time um, going from the symbol selector. And then we need one more, so just control V again. And then we have three resistors. So now we're gonna be editing the components values for this. So for our project, we're going to first edit this resistor. You can do so by right-clicking here, going into properties, and then we're gonna to wanna to change that value. So the first one should be 1K. Once you're done with that, press OK. Do so for this one as well. You can also press E. I'm going to change in this box here. And we're going to have this resistor be 470K. And then for resistors, we're going to also open up this symbol properties, and then this should be 1K. Capacitor is next. So that value should be one microfarad. So in this case here, uh, we have a base value, which is one, and then the scale should be U, which is micro, and then the unit will be F. That's OK. And then that should be all the component values that we're editing for now. Next, we're going to assign component footprints. So resistors, capacitors, inductors, and other components can come in, in many different packages, such as SMD, THT. And then we want to assign the symbols a certain footprint so that we can match it up to a physical component that we have in the lab. So we're going to do so by using the Run Footprint Assignment tool by pressing that symbol. Um, that you see on the slide there. I'm going to show you where it is in KiCad in a bit. So for resistors, we're going to search for that resistor underscore THT library because we're using through-hole technology resistors. And then we're going to search for that specific specification that will fit our resistor that we have in the lab. Same goes for the capacitor, LED, and then also that um, connector that we have. Okay, so now we're going to assign footprints by heading over to the top toolbar and then pressing the symbol here. It's going to open up the footprint assignment tool. So once you've opened that, you're going to go to this left side, which is has all the footprint libraries. We're going to search for, um, we're going to assign the footprint for the, capa the capacitor first. So we're going to find that capacitor underscore THT one. Once you press that, you can see to the right that it's filtered out the footprints for just the capacitor THT one that we need. Then I'm going to go to the search bar here and then search for the one that we actually need. So it'll be CP underscore radio underscore D 4.0. And then it's filtered up enough that we can find the one that we need. This is the one we need. So if you want to uh, assign a footprint, you can just double click this. And then you can see that C1 has been assigned this footprint here. We'll head over to D1, which is the LED. Um, we're going to have to go to that um, LED library now. So it should be right here, LED underscore THT. Going to delete this and then search for the one I need. Should be LED underscore D3. Should be this top one right here. Double click. Now for that socket, I'm going to head over to connector underscore pin header. And it should be that 2.54 millimeter one. And then for this project, we're going to need that, pin, sorry, pin header underscore one. Two underscore P. So I'm going to use this bar to scroll to the right, find the one I need. And then I'm actually searching for that vertical one. So I'm going to press this one. And then for resistors, we're going to search for that resistor underscore THT. 
It's right here. Scroll back. So for all those resistors that we're going to use for our project, we're going to use the same exact uh, footprint, which is DN0207. It's filtered up enough, so we're going to search for the one we need, which is a 7.62 horizontal one. Should be this third one right here. I'm going to need um, three of those, so I'm just going to double click, double click, double click. And then for our 5 and 5 timer, it's already assigned, so we don't need to worry about that. Once you're done, just press OK. And then you have assigned all your footprints for your components. So next, we're going to be adding wires. So after setting the footprint of one symbol, you can copy it and then change the pasted components value. Uh, we already did that with the resistor, so you don't have to worry about that step. And then you're going to not connect symbols directly into pins, but we're actually going to instead use wires to connect the pins. And then in order to add a wire, all you have to do is press W on your keyboard, and then you can do so to connect two pins. To the right is an example of some wires that we've laid down for this project here. Okay, I'm going to show you how to lay some wires down, but before that, I'm going to move some components around. So if you want to do that, you can just left click on a component and then press M. That'll allow you to drag your component around. So I'm just going to actually just leave this in the center for now. So I'm going to actually move my resistors. So you can left click here. You can also just left click and then hold down just to drag. And leave that here. I like to use this left click and then hold down that left click to drag uh, the resistor. It's more convenient for me instead of pressing the M. I'm going to drag this one here as well. I'm going to move this LED here. PCC will go up here. I'm leaving a ground there. Capacitor will be to right here. And then we're going to have, sorry, we're going to have this socket and click around this middle area to highlight it. We're actually going to rotate this to have the um, semicircles on the left side. So I'm just going to press R and then R again. And then I'm going to drag this to the left here. I just rotate it here so that we can more conveniently wire these components. Okay, so I'm going to start with wiring VCC to where I need to. So in order to do that, you can just press W. You can already see um, it's already highlighting, and then you can see that green line right there. That's saying that you should add a wire. So all you have to do, just hover over a pin, and then just press W. And you can see uh, a green line that kind of drags out. And then you can just drag it to the pin where you need to connect to. And then just press W again to finish it. I'm going to do so for all these wires. So you can feel free to follow along. Connect this here. Click W again. I'm going to connect that to pin 2 of the socket. I'm going to connect these two resistors together. And then also create a node from here to pin 7. Going to connect ground to this earth symbol. Also going to connect this wire to pin one. And then to the end of the capacitor. I'm actually going to press escape here and then escape once or going to that select items once more. I'm just going to move this capacitor up real quick. OK, I'm going to lay my wire now by pressing W again. And then I'm going to press W here, connect these two, and then going to connect pin six here. Also capacitor is connected to the LED here. And then LED is connected to this resistor. And then that should be it. Sorry, I forgot one more here. Which pin four is going to connect to this wire right here. So that should be it for now. 
um, your wiring doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but it should just look like this. Okay, moving on, we're gonna add some connections with labels. So why use labels instead of wires? Well, you could use them if you can't connect two pins due to wires and components in a way. Also, labels are just good for clarity and cleanliness, and it's advised to label most, if not all nets and nodes if you can. So to add a label, you can press L and then put it in the stretch of a wire. And then you can just name it an intuitive name and then repeat wherever else you want to connect that point to. You can also add not connected flags in the end. So you can add the no connection markers for all the unused pins to complete the schematic. This indicates to the PCB editor and to other people that the pin is not meant to be connected to anything. To add a not connected flag, you can press Q or click on the um, icon that you see in the slide there. And you can find this to the right of the schematic editor. Before our schematic is finished, we actually have two last steps we need to do. So we're going to um, use the ERC, which is the electronic rules check. So make sure to run that under inspect. And then the only error we should receive right now is error input power pin is not driven by any output power pins. This means that we don't have any specific input power pin, or we didn't specify that we have a nine volt battery that's um, powering our pin. Next, we want to annotate the schematic. Um, we want to annotate our schematic as well by annotating or clicking annotate under tools. Now I'm going to show you how to run the ERC. So all you have to do is go to that top toolbar, press on this right here, and then we're going to hit run ERC. And then this is what we should expect. Um, we have these two errors which say input power pin is not driven by any output power pins. Like I said, this is because we didn't specify our um, input power, which is okay for now. So it's going to delete these markers since we're okay with that. Let me click here, delete. I'm going to delete this one as well. And we should have zero errors and warnings for now. So I'm going to click close. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to make sure everything's annotated. So you can click here. And then we're going to annotate our schematic. It says annotation complete. So I'm just going to hit close. And then we're done for this schematic capture process. I also want to note that if you want to save your schematic at any point in time, you can go to File, hit Save, or you can also just hit Control S, which is what I do a lot. And then after the no connect markers are added, the annotation is done, and the ERC is run, the schematic is complete. Um, it doesn't have to look exactly the same uh, as long as the connections are the same. Okay, so now we're going to get into the PCB design process. So we have four steps today. So we're going to first define our board outline and then place their components and then place traces and vias. And then we're going to add any necessary fills in the end. So this is our PCB editor and what it should look like. It's sort of like a dark mode of the schematic editor. Um, you can link back to these shortcuts whenever you need to. Um, we're going to be using some of these in our tutorial today. These are also some important shortcuts that you can look back later. Um, some are similar to the schematic editor, such as R, which is rotating an object, and also M, moving an object on its own. You'll note here that um, instead of W for creating a wire, um, you have X, which is to create a trace. So now I'm going to talk about some PCB layers. So F and B stands for front and bottom. So we have the front and bottom copper layer. Um, this is where the traces, vias, and fills are. Then we have the front and bottom courtyard, which defines the area, area around parts which there cannot be other parts on the copper layers. Then we have the front and back silk screen, which are just the graphics that are on top of the solder mask. They're usually white and they're just usually for text. And then we also have the edge cut, which is the board outline. Some other layers, um, we have the front and bottom mask, the fab layer, and also the adhesive layers. Also, we have the user drawings slash comments. Feel free to take a look at these later and also to read these on your own. To export the schematic to the PCB, you're going to want to add the footprints. And to do so, you press F8 or you can click this icon on the top toolbar. 
once the dialog pops up, you can just press update PCB, then just watch for any errors, and then you can press close. After that, you will see some footprints that appear on a PCB, uh, like this to the right. And then afterwards, we're just going to drag it somewhere on our PCB editor and just place it down. I'm going to demonstrate this in KiCad. So if you want to open up the PCB editor from your schematic, you can head over to this top area and just press on this button, which says Open PCB in Board Editor. Might take a while. Okay, there we go. So we have the PCB editor open. And then, um, like I said, we're going to add our footprints. So all you have to do is go to Stop Toolbar, Update PCB with changes made to the schematic. Click Update PCB. Just watch for any errors. We have zero, which is good. And then click Close. And then you'll see here that we have our footprints that just pop up. Um, for me, it popped up on the top left corner. So just want to get that and then drag it to the middle. And then you can just left click to place it anywhere. I'm just going to place it here. And then navigating around the PCB editor is just like the schematic editor. If you want to zoom in or zoom out, you can press here. I like to scroll um, in and out on my cursor. So I'm going to do so here. And then you can see our footprints for our components. So I'm just going to finish this by cl clicking Save. And we're going to move on to the next process. We're first going to create our board outline. So select the edge cuts layer by clicking on it, and then it will be gray once you highlight it. Then you want to create a closed graphical shape in the edge cuts layer, which is usually a rectangle. And these layers represent the outline or the cutout of the board, and any closed shape of any size will do. But it is recommended that you create a rectangle or any other similar shape. Here is a simple rectangle using the rectangle tool. Make sure to leave plenty of space to move the footprints and traces around. And then, like I said, you can make any shape using the arc, line, or polygon tools as long as it's a closed shape. Okay, so I'm here back in KiCad. So first, I'm going to select the edge cuts layer. You can find all the layers on the right toolbar area. So edge cuts you can find right here. I'm just going to left click. And you can see that it's highlighted gray once you selected it. Afterwards, I'm going to enclose my footprints with a rectangle. So I'm going to head over to this toolbar and then look for the rectangle. I'm going to hit that to draw a rectangle. I'm going to zoom out a bit to make more space for myself. And then I'm going to start the rectangle on the top left corner. I'm going to hit left click once. I'm going to drag out. And then I'm going to close my footprints and draw the rectangle around it. If you want to finish it, then just left click one more time. We'll leave a little more space. So that should be good. And then hit left click. And then that will be your edge cuts layer. I'm just going to go back to the cursor. And then there we are. To move components to place, you're going to want to move them so that they can be connected using traces and vias. And note that we have two layers of copper, and we can use either of them to connect pins. Today, we're going to mainly use that front layer of that copper to connect these pins. There will be little lines or curves connecting one or more pins. These are called the rat's nest, as you can see in the image to the right. There are those gray little lines that you see. And these indicate which pins need to be connected to one another. Make sure to stay in the outline and not to overlap the pink boxes on the outside of the footprints. These are called the courtyards. So make sure you're not overlapping components. Um, and those are denoted by the courtyards. So now I'm going to show you how to move components around. So the goal of this here is to make sure that when we're connecting traces and vias, that we do so as neatly as possible. And this is set up by proper component placement. So I'm going to first move my 555 timer um, to this side right here and making sure that I'm not overlapping with courtyards. The way I'm moving this is the same as the schematic editor where I'm just left clicking and then I'm holding down that left click to drag it around. Or you can also just press M and then that'll allow you to hover this around and you can set it down by left clicking again. So I'm just gonna move some components around, make sure that our red nest will be convenient in the end. 
and move this 555 timer here in the middle. I'm going to move some components out. I'm going to leave this capacitor here. I'm going to need R2, so I'm going to drag it here and then press rotate once, which is with R. I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to leave this connector socket on the edge. This is just so that, um, this is like a design specification. So it's preferred that I want my connector socket to be on the edge of the PCB. I'm going to leave R3 around here. I'm just gonna rotate it like this, like so. I'm going to leave R1 on the top here. And then I'm going to lastly move my LED to be so here. And your um, PCB layout does not have to be exactly like how mine looks, but make sure to do so, so that your traces um, are convenient in the end. And that's in the end, like I said, it's determined by your component placement. Before we actually lay down our traces and vias, we're going to set them up. So we want to set the size of phases, vias and traces to adjust resistance. And the wider the trace, the less resistive it is, and also same with the vias. So we want to make sure that the traces that carry higher current are wider. And also for data signals that the trace size doesn't really matter very much. This is because minimal current is carried across data signals. And then for our units, we're going to use mils, which stands for milli-inches. Make sure you don't confuse that with millimeters. So we want to click the via size selection list or the track size collection list. And then from there, we can just hit edit predefined sizes. And then once you're in there, you can just press plus under the vias table to add a via size of 30 mils. We want to make sure that the via hole is 20 mils. And then also we want to add two track sizes, which is 30 mils and 40 mils. After that, you can confirm by pressing OK. So to so set up your traces and vias, head over to your top left corner, hit track, use that class width, go down to that drop down bar and hit predefined sizes. It might take a while for you. And then once you're in here, we're going to add a track width. So to do so, you're going to press plus. For our project today, we're going to add track sizes of 30 mils and then 40 mils. So you can do so just typing in this bar here. I have one with 30 mils, another one with 40 mils. And I'm sorry, I'm going to delete this right here. So we should only have these two here. And then for our VS, we're going to add one with a di diameter of 30 mils and then a whole size of 20 mils. Once you've done that, just click OK. And then you can see over here, um, if I click the drop down here, that we have our tracks laid out. So we have our track width of 30 mils here, 40 mils here. And then we also have our vias. Um, our via size of 30 mils, and then also our whole size of 20 mils here. Now that we have the track sizes and via sizes, we can start drawing the traces. So to place a track, we need to select a track size from the drop down menu. And then we have a 40 mils track for the power and ground lines, and then a 30 mils track for the signal lines. Note here that we have the power and ground lines of a wider track trace than the signal lines. And then like I said before, this is because traces that carry higher current need to be wider. So that's why our power and ground lines are wider. And then second thing we're gonna do is deselect this icon that you see between the track size and the via size dropdowns before routing. Uh, this is so that we can make our track sizes uh, not become confused with one another while we're routing. Okay, so to route traces and vias, right now, make sure not to wire ground because we'll do that later. And then we're going to click on the front copper layer in the selector to start routing. To draw a track, you just press X while hovering over a pin. And then if you need to make a turn or pivot, you can click on that pivot point and then just route from there. 
So when routing traces and vias, you're going to want to make sure you're on the correct track width. So for now, I'm going to um, trace and route a power line. So I'm going to use this track right here. This is the wider track, remember? And then also make sure to deselect this when routing. And then since we only have one via size, just going to select this for now. And then also a tip when you're laying down traces and vias is you can select this grid size. Basically, it allows for more maneuverability and allows you to place traces down more precisely. So you can select a smaller grid length for that. I'm going to select 0 0.1. And then that should be it for the setup. So now we're going to start routing traces and vias. So I'm going to zoom in real quick to this one right here, for example. You can um, connect this VCC pin to this VCC pin here. That's denoted by that rat's nest line that you see right there. So I'm just going to hover over this pin here. And then all you have to do is press X. But before you do that, make sure you head over to this layer side and then you are on that front copper layer. So now that we're on that, we can click this here, left click, and then you can click X. And then you can see your trace um, being dragged out. Just make sure to connect that to eight, which is the VCC, the other VCC pin. Finish that by clicking X again. And then there we go. So that's one trace. I'm just gonna do it for the rest. So now, I'm going, since I'm going to a signal trace, I'm going to go to this width now. So I'm going to now continue um, running all this stuff up. So this will be here. I'm going to route this to here with X. And also make sure, try not to have your traces um, overlapping with this pin here. I'm just gonna move it further out a bit. You can do so by just left clicking and then hold that left click down, drag this around. You can do so for like any other uh, traces that you have, for example, this one here. I'm just gonna leave that like that. Going to connect this TR here to here. And then also Q out, Q out, this one's here. And then see how I place my components down um, properly and also very conveniently so that, for example, I had this pin close to this pin so that this trace or rat's nest would be a shorter distance. So I'm going to connect this TR again here to here. And then I'm just pressing X, highlighting, make sure that all these pins are connected to one another. I have everything connected. I need to connect this one to this one here. Um, I'm going to actually delete this trace because you can see here that you can't have traces going across each other. So something clever I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this as well as this trace. I'm going to go around actually. I just press X and I'm going to press X one more time here, X, and then one more X here. And then I'm going to fix this real quick. It's a little messy right here. So I'm just going to left click here and then drag, and then that will auto correct it here. So, for example, if that happens to you, you can just do that. And then now that I've cleared up that area there, I can now route this here. So press X and X again. Make sure to leave earth slash ground unrouted for her now. I'm just going to double check I have everything routed together. I'm missing a VCC um, trace from this socket to here, so I'm going to do that. Make sure to change your track width when you're handling power lines. So once I've done that, I'm just going to add another one here. Connect that up, and then we should be good for now. Um, I'm going to leave this VCC pin disconnected with this one for now, and I'm going to show you a clever trick to 
route this together since you can't normally do it if you have a red trace. You can't have this red trace crossing over another red trace, right? So I'm going to show you in a bit how I'm going to route this to this. So if you can't route wires like we had um, in that VCC example, you want to press V while routing and you can use the other layer with the VIA. So when you draw the traces, the color will be blue, indicating that you're on the other side of the copper layer, which is the back copper layer. And then to go back to the first layer, you will need to create another via, and then the trace length should now be red. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna route these two VCC pins by using a via. So I'm going to click on this pin here. I'm just gonna highlight it, and then I'm gonna click X. And then, like I said, normally you can't across that. So I'm going to press V. And then you can see that that via is denoted by that circle that you see on that wire right there now. I'm just going to click left click anywhere. I'm just going to left click close to that trace there. And then now you can see that my trace is blue. That means I'm on that back copper layer now. And then you can also see that I'm on that back copper layer because you can see on that layer right there how it's highlighted. So now that I'm this back copper layer, I can actually cross, technically cross this um, red trace here. And then I'm actually going to go back to that front copper layer once again. So doing so by pressing V one more time, and then left click again to place another via. And then I'm going to drag this out and then connect this to via or VCC. And then that's how, for example, you would use a via. Okay, so for finishing routing, try and route all the traces on one layer by making the path from one pin to the next as small as possible. And the only unrouted net right now should be ground. Also make sure that everything is routed correctly by cross-checking with your data sheets and also your schematic. We're gonna move on to adding the ground fill. So we left ground unrouted purposefully so that we can connect it with the fill. So a fill is just a large piece of copper that fills all of the gaps in the design and is connected to whatever nets it's assigned to. Fills are used to stabilize ground, allow for better current conduction, also to allow for more heat to be dissipated across the PCB. So to add a fill, you want to select this icon that is um, pointed by the arrow, or you can also use the shortcut Control Shift Z. Make sure that we're both on the front or bottom copper layer for this step here. Then afterwards, you wanna click a point outside of the border. You're gonna get this menu that pops up here. Select both the front and bottom copper layers, and then select the earth net as the side net that we're going to use for the ground fill. And then make sure you just don't touch the rest of the parameters you see on the bottom, just press okay. And after this, we can move on to drawing the fill. So once we have a fill started, just draw its border and then draw a shape outside of the perimeter by enclosing the whole shape or PCB. And then after adding all the corners of the shape, close the shape by connecting all four corners. And then in the end, you can just press B to make the fill real. Back in the PCB editor, in order to make a fill, make sure you're on the front or bottom copper layer. So right now it says that I'm on the front copper layer, so we should be good. And then, like I said, to add a fill, we're going to press on this um, button here, which says add a filled zone. Left click once, and then you're gonna wanna left click outside of your PCB anywhere. Um, make sure not to do it inside here. You're gonna put it outside to enclose the whole PCB. Um, before I do that, actually, I'm going to change my grid size as well to one, just to make sure that I'm trying to create a rectangle shape for the ground fill. So I'm gonna left click here. I'm going to select both the front and bottom copper layers. And then I'm going to select Earth as that assigned a net. And then I'm going to press OK. Should be good for now. And then you can see here when I'm dragging out, I'm not clicking anything. I'm just dragging out. And then you can see a line start, sort of forming. I'm going to create a rectangle shape now around my PCB. So left click here to create a corner. Left click once again here. And then I'm gonna left click one more time. And then I'm gonna line it up 
to make a nice rectangle around the PCP. Left clicking one more time. Um, your fill zone doesn't have to be an exact rectangle. I just made it to make it neat. But as long as it's enclosing the whole PCB, you should be good. So the last step is just to press B and that's going to make the fill real. So then there we go. You can see the fill zone now um, highlighted in the PCB editor. Once we finish the PCB and once we have the fill all done, there should be no more rat's nest. So if there are any connections that need to be made, make sure you make them and then we can place it via if there's a void in to fill um, to fix the void. And after that, you can press B after to refill. This is an optional but very helpful step that follows this. We need to also move all the silk screen items so that they're easily visible. And to do that, you can select the silk screen layers and move the text so it's visible. Um, you can see that the silk screen is pretty visible um, like this on that image below. So once you've double checked all of that, we're going to move on to exporting manufacturing files. So you're gonna save the PCB with control or command S, then make sure to press the plot button um, as you can see in that top right, not the printer button, but it's a little weird printer shape that you can see. Then you're gonna get that dialog that shows up. Once you see that, you're just gonna press the output directory and press plot. Then just press generate drill file, zip the photo with the files, and then you're gonna upload the zip to a fab. So now I'm, I'm gonna demonstrate that for you in KiCad. Okay, so once you've double checked all of that, we're gonna move on to exporting manufacturing files. So make sure you save the PCB with Control or Command S. Save. And then now we're gonna press the plot button, which is to the right of that printer. And make sure you select an output directory. I'm going to select this folder here. Looks good to me. And then I'm going to press the plot button. You're going to get some output messages it says done. I'm going to generate drill files. Click this, it says done, close. And then that should be the manufacturing files that you need. So I'm going to press close. And then I'm going to show you in a bit in the file explorer um, how to zip the folder. And then we're going to send that to the fab. So make sure to go to the output directory where you selected to have your manufacturing files in. So in this case, it would be in this folder for me. I'm gonna select that. And then you can actually see all your manufacturing files that you've created. So I'm just going to highlight all of them here. And also I'm gonna make sure that I have this drill file here as well. So I'm going to hit control click, left click, just to select that. And then also I'm going to right click and then hit compress to zip file. And then you can name it anything you want. I'm going to name it um, fab files. So once you have that, that should be the zip folder that you can send to your fab now to manufacture your PCB. And then with that, we are done with this workshop. I know that was a lot, but good job everyone for making it to the end and see you next time.